This section is going to look at identifying independent and dependent variables and functions. This will help you when you have to set up a graph so you know um, which is the x uh, label and which is the label that's going to go on the y-axis. So you, it helps if you put it in a little sentence. So for example, Julian's lawyer fee is $200 for his services. So what depends on what? So his income the money he makes depends on the number of hours or the number of services that he provides. So the sentence again is his income depends. So income depends on the number of services or the number of hours he works. This is a very lousy new stylus, guys. Ryan will buy pizzas according to the number of people at the party. So what depends on what? So the number of pizzas he buys will depend on the number of people at the party. So the way that you might see this on a graph is you would see um, a graph like this, and then on the x-axis is the independent, and that's the number of people, and then up on the side is the number of pizzas. The cost to gift wrap and order is $3 for every item wrapped. So the cost depends on the number of items. Warren charges $30 for each lawn he mows. So his income depends on the number of lawns he mows. After a while, you're going to see a pattern where you might see cost and income. It's gonna be dependent because that is that depends on how much work you do. Alex's car can travel 28 miles per gallon of gas. So the number of miles he can drive depends on the number of gallons of gas that he has. Matthew discovered a small bottle of water cost $1.15, a large bottle cost $2.25. Here's a little bit trickier. So the cost depends on the size of the bottle. Anders earns two vacation days for each month he works on the job. So the dependent is his vacation days depends on the number of months he's on the job. Air Force One can travel 630 miles per hour. This is a tricky one. So here you have, and you can kind of look at here, miles per hour. So you have the distance. Depends on the time. There's a few additional examples here. Some of them we've already covered, but we could do number seven. You could do number eight. You could do 15 and 17. Give those a try. One of the other practice problems that we're going to look at is evaluating each function. So if you had 2x plus 4, and if x is 3, what would the value of that expression be? So what you're going to do here is you're going to take your value for x is 3 and just plug it in here. So 2x means 2 times x. So we have 2 times 3 plus 4. You have 6 plus 4, which gives you 10. But a different practice problem, if you had um, 3, it's a messy 3. Okay, so if you had 3 minus 4x and x was negative 
2. You would again substitute right here. So you have 3 minus 4 times negative 2. And you have 3, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, which gives you 11. So if you go back to page 2, go ahead and take a look at numbers 9 through 11 and just do the substitution there.